Alright, I don't know if uh, this is working, but I'll just stop, start, and I've plotted out a lot of uh, areas that have, oops, I plotted out a lot of areas that have the, uh, the elevation, let's see, I'm going to get to that screen, and I find it, I find it interesting because I, I was, I was uh, comparing the weather between the different elevations, and I'm, I'm finding that the the over 6,000 uh, feet it looks a lot better. So coming, I, I I've, I'm north of Denver, which is which is way too hot, and they're only at like. Uh, 5,000 feet, 78 compared to Cheyenne, 74. Well, I noticed there was 10 degrees difference in some places. <clears throat> um, yeah, all right. Uh, I see that, Eric. And I just want I want to stick uh, on higher elevations. I want to stay above 6,000 elevation. So. I've plotted out various places that I, I think I should focus on for for the weather um, and Denver is is too hot I just I don't want to deal with that that heat wave convinced me to get the heck out of there it's actually it's actually better weather in Colorado Springs because they're about a thousand feet higher so that's that's more attractive and um so so going going uh in in a south direction isn't such a bad idea when the elevation is higher but um i might go back through colorado springs uh i didn't check it all out i was a little scared of the south because of what i've heard I try to watch videos about the area before I go to them. Monument gets a little too warm, it, but well, it's about the same, almost the same elevation as Colorado Springs. I think it's a little bit lower. You start going down in elevation. I was, yeah, I was, yeah. The latest video is in Monument. I went to Palmer Lake. That's that gets a little bit lower. You start, you descend from from Colorado Springs to Denver uh, a pretty significant elevation Let's see if I just okay 5280 that's too low um, and then Colorado Springs elevation is uh, is higher uh, Elevation. Let's see if that works. 6035 compared to 5280. That's pretty significant. That's a that's a good five degree difference in in summer weather. Um, yeah, winter weather you, you probably more likely want to be. Yeah, Alaska. Okay. Um, I don't know how I could get through Canada. That's that's a big problem for me. I can't just can't just drive. It's like trying to get to Hawaii for me. Um, all right, getting back to the page. So the elevation is different between Colorado Springs. It's on a higher elevation, and it maintains uh, about a five degree uh, cooler temperature, which isn't which is pretty nice. Denver just it just got way too hot um, the past the past week or two. Going to Boulder offers no relief. Boulder might even be lower than Colorado. I've been I've been making sure to, to check on the on these uh, library connections the the elevation. Um, yeah, add a add, add a label, but that's not. I don't recall that being it. It's actually I was able to do it on my iPod at least. And I was putting in the elevation. I'll, I'll show it. I'll show it a little bit. Like, okay, for is that how? 
I guess it is. Okay, for like, I, I, I probably marked this one, Oak Creek, and I put, I put a note. Oh, okay. So it only, okay, this is only for the iPod. I, I, I planned on making this video for uh, showing elevations, and I thought they would show up on, on the regular website. Okay, my notes, my notes are not at a label. It's, I, I, I could, well, I, I did not plan on that one. All right. Um, I, I, I studied, I, I could talk about it, I guess, but that's, no, no, I'm a little confused. Um, my notes aren't in order. Uh, well then, I guess this will be a short one. I guess I just what I'm what I'm noticing is is uh, all around in these this green patch, or I got all these libraries marked. There's I'm I'm marking I'm trying to mark all the I've marked all the elevations, but yeah, up to Aspen. I don't know if I'll make it to try to get to Aspen. What I'm thinking is I want to make maybe like a city or a, a, a day or a city every other day or something like that. But I got a big, big jump uh, around the northern part. There's this rim from Cheyenne to Laramie. They're the same elevation. They're both above 6,000 elevation, which is pretty nice. And that's that makes for a cooler temperature, but I, I can't... I can't share that elevation because I I, I guess I, I expected it to show also show up on this. Yeah, I could add a label for the library. Adding a label, <laughs> so you got to add the information twice. Laramie, that's that's not maybe maybe Google Maps. I think just started at seventy one. 65 because that's one th that's a note that I find worthy putting on uh, these these marks for the library 7165 elevation that's pretty good no yeah there it shows up on my label so I got it on you got to input it twice if you want to pass I thought I would be able to see it on the, the internet the, the webs the regular website I just I don't know what I was thinking I never checked until I got on here so the uh this and wait laramie yeah this is laramie and and then and then cheyenne is about six thousand you go up in elevation a little bit to laramie um how many libraries do i visit oh, i don't know it's maybe 15 a month or so sometimes i'll i'll hit three in one day just like Denver, I, I bicycled around and hit three in one day. That's, you know, that's, uh, some, some will have a library every four or five miles, not, not too far away. It just the, depends on the density of the city. Getting up to the, getting up to these uh, northern parts, though, they're pretty spread out. But, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this northern parts. Fort Collins was no relief. That is a low elevation. I could put that as a note. Here, maybe I'll I'll stick on the screen. Okay, Fort Collins is Fort Collins gets too hot in the summertime. Five thousand elevation. Old yeah, uh, Old Town Library. Five five. I'll just put the number because I know what I want. Yeah, that's I'm I'm looking at circling around those those mountains. The the uh, there's there's quite a few. I'm thinking between July and and until the end of August, I want to stay in higher elevations. So these these uh there's there's this rim that's on a higher elevation. You go between Cheyenne and Laramie, you go up in elevation, and then also this one this this one goes up in elevation. The Centennial Centennial is is uh now I'll probably need to put in the the state for this one Wyoming yeah 
and you can check them out. 8,000, that goes up even higher. So that's even cooler weather. And uh, I want to put that on there as, my, as a note now. Centennial 8,074. So, so go from 6,000 to 7,000 to 8,000. I, I like that. You just as the as the temperature as a, you live at nine thousand feet. Wow, freezing. Yeah, no doubt. That's some that's some good elevation right there. That is like nine thousand is a great elevation for this this summer heat. That's that's definitely preferable. That's what I think I can focus on. Uh, and I see Cheyenne 6,000, Laramie 7,000, this other one. Saratoga, I don't recall that going up. I think that one was one to avoid because it's it's a little too, it starts maybe starts to drop. Six, no, maybe not. Okay, see, I forget. 6791, so I want to add that label. 6791. All right, that's a good elevation. Above 6,000 uh, is, is going to maintain a, a good, cool temperature. So I could, I could follow this rim in Wyoming, and then I was thinking at that point I would start heading down. And in this all this green area, uh, it's going to be cool. My biggest concerns are small-town cops and bears. I don't know like how bad it can get. I'm sure there's going to be a bad city somewhere around here that's going to be pretty hostile. I watched some videos of people camping out around the, the area and getting kicked out of places. Yeah, you could check the average temperature, but uh, um, you, you, also find, you also find consistency in, in the elevation, too. I'm I'm comparing I, I compare temperatures, but elevation really has a big impact on the temperatures. Uh, like if I okay, I was looking at Casper. What if I went further north to Casper? That's that's a low elevation and it gets hot like Denver. There is no relief going to Casper. There's no relief going to Casey. No relief going to these northern places because they're all they'll drop down in elevation. I was considering just, you know, what if I just went straight north, but you just go north to the Canadian line and I'm not finding any relief from the heat. So it's like, I'm thinking, oh yeah, a lot of rainfall. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, uh, I've been getting, uh, surprised by a lot of thunderstorms that have just been coming in with, without even a, a warning. It's like the, the uh, the forecaster does, doesn't even know when it's when the thunderstorms come in and, and then my it gets hot and I start sweating in my car roll up the windows if I go to the library ra library or something roll down the windows go to the library and then as a, you know an hour later it's, it's it's a massive shower as my windows are all down and it, and then it's done in an hour or so it's just it's crazy how it's it gets hot and then it rains and then it gets hot again. And it's it's hard to really manage the the windows on my car, so I I don't think I want to go any further north. This yeah the, the sunroof is is uh, perfectly secured on the top with the liquid nails. There's no leaks whatsoever. So it's, uh, I tore out the motor because it's worthless, and now that's an area where I put my um, that on uh, the top part you can see in my video that's that's where I put my my uh, GPS is right on the top there so but yeah I'm, I'm not interested in going north any further I, I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna focus on this uh, this rim that's in Wyoming and that's short that's well short of of the uh, the, the Yellowstone Yellowstone, yeah, Yellowstone is way up. So I'll avoid the Yellowstone. Yeah, just follow that rim. It's a high, a nice. Yeah, I probably will be going checking out Netherlands. That's Boulder. I probably have it marked. I got a lot of these Granby, Kremling, Hot Sulphur Springs. 
All three of these have pretty decent elevations. How are they for cities? I don't, I don't know. But the elevations for weather look great for summer weather. I definitely don't want to be caught in these areas during the winter time. But right now in this heat, it's a good relief. Denver is like, see, I kind of want to circle back to Denver at the end of August and then check out the west side if, it's, if I can manage my time and distance and all of that. I'll check out the parts of Wyoming, not go too far north, and then start heading down, I guess, into to the Walden. Walden, um, since I don't have the note for that, Walden... Walden Elevation, Walden, Colorado Elevation, 80, ooh, yeah, that's good. Uh, somebody's banned from Nederland? Do they ban people easily? So I, seen, is, I thought Cereal Marshmallows, he's not on the California coast? That's, that seems familiar for some reason. Isn't he a car dealer or something? I have to refresh my memory on him. Uh, okay, Walden is at 8,099 feet, which is a great elevation. That's, yeah, I, and I was impressed with that one. Um, so checking that out is, is definitely, that's a lot of driving because it's between Cheyenne and Laramie, that's, that's uh, 60 miles. So that's that's a good distance, and then around this this whole rim between libraries, it's it's like 60 miles between all of these spots. So I need I need these spots to be like comfortable spots to stop for a night or two, not some place where they'll try to run me out. And you think as isolated as they are, they they should be the people the locals should be a little uh, friendly. But it's, it's, it's not always the case, like if you end up in Idaho City. Um, so hitting that rim and then heading south, kind of bouncing around for the next, what, between July and August till the end of August, it's 60 days. Maybe try to like balance out two days each city or something so I can explore around. And in between cities, I don't know what's in between. But these are some pretty big bounces. And the library hours for these isolated cities are not very good. They're not very long or anything, so I'll be working outside quite a bit. So um, I'm just, just got a cereal marshmallows. Yeah, I seen his, I seen his, I think I seen his uh, videos a few years ago. I mean, uh, I think you. I, I think I recall seeing him in uh, making videos in in uh, in Cali um, California, and and uh, I I don't know. I he's got yeah. He's he's a very popular guy. Um, he's, oh wait, no, he's that's not that's a different guy then. Okay. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, let's see see you, Nufi. Um, good. Um, oh wait. Okay, that's him. Yeah, he's he's a popular. How, you know how do these how do these people maintain such good as a daily driver, and... driver, that ain't going down. Oh yeah, that's the guy. Okay, yeah, I've seen him before. Somebody told me about him before. Um, I don't know. I never I never subscribed to him. I I just. He's, I think he's selling cars, right? It's Cummins Power Ram. I'm not really looking for moving to Montana a week ago. I'm not really looking for cars. That's his specialty. So that's his niche is, is uh, like car sales, I guess. And there's, there's a lot of people who have that, uh, that uh, interest. Like um, that, one, that one guy out of Canada, uh, Pug, Pug Life, Pug Life has, he, he has a lot of, a lot of vehicle stuff going on, and he's very popular, 20, 228,000, that's, 
Oh, the three, yeah, it's probably his latest video. Is, it's got something, some kind of vehicle in, uh, information. Hold my beer and watch. That's popular. He put his, okay, he put his jumps and crashes uh, line of videos on the very top and then goes to uploads. Yeah, it looks like it's they're working on vehicles or some kind of. Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of interest in that. Um, I I uh, I just focusing on my car. My car is making kind of a weird rattling sound, but it's it's so faint that I don't know what to think of it. it it's normally when I hit bumps and stuff that I hear it. So I don't know what to think of that. I want to go up in that northern region, come down. And then at that point, I don't know, it's, I change my directions a lot when I get to certain areas anyway, but I try to think through what, I mean, for these, for this area, it's, I don't know how dangerous it can be, especially for, for, uh, the law. Uh, how are these, how are these people? I was thinking this Bud Werner, I, I was, I, I liked, I marked it cause I liked it. But I don't steamboat springs, steamboat springs elevation, springs. Sixty-seven thirty-two is pretty good. So yeah, that's sixty-seven thirty-two. That's my kind of elevation. That's a big. That's a big jump from. Yeah. Mountain law, that's like, that's probably different from Plains law. Um, I know Idaho City is, is pretty, the, the locals were worse than the law, though, in Idaho City. They're, they're, well, they're pretty bad in just, uh, Idaho, the, the Rocky Mountains of the Idaho area is pretty bad in general for people. Twin, yeah, you go up. You get you get into another kind of rocky mountains. I don't for some reason I guess I wasn't I wasn't hitting up the high elevations in Idaho because it was I was hitting a lot of hot areas. No, not Missoula. Where Coeur d'Alene? I missed. I went around Coeur d'Alene, Spokane, to, uh, Spokane, to, uh, and I went north. Spirit. There was no relief in Spirit Lake. There's there was no relief in Sandpoint. I mean, I well, I never really checked these elevations, but I was not, I was not impressed. You get higher north, and it just there was no relief. I don't even, I don't even, I didn't spend time to to look at those elevations. Um, Sand Point, Idaho. Uh, Oh, no, what? Oh, El no, not Colorado. All right. Oh, no wonder it's okay. Yeah, they, they definitely hate homeless. 2000 elevation is is not is not going to bring any relief from the summer heats. No wonder. That's part of the reason why they the people around there are bad, bad moods. It's because the elevate they may have all those nice mountains, but they're in such low elevations. Where was an area that I was at that had a lot of mountains, but was still probably a low elevation in Idaho? I just okay. I think that okay. I never really got too close to the to the line. Coeur d'Alene, I'm sure, is low. Uh, spirit. I went further north to Priest. Like Priest River was hot in the summertime, so uh, Priest River is probably a low elevation. They got all these, they got all these nice mountains, but they're all around in Idaho. It's such low elevation that it gets, that you get some hot summers. It doesn't matter. Um, that was okay. Priest River. I'll just, I'll just put that in. Uh, West Bonner, ad label 2000. Yeah, around around the uh, Idaho mountains, you don't get any relief. You don't go up to Idaho for the summertime. If you want real relief, unless, unless you don't mind the heat, 
But if you want real relief, you don't go into the Idaho mountains. You go into the Wyoming mountains and the Colorado mountains. I mean, yeah, these are ski areas. They're mostly known for ski, ski activities, but um, I can't, I don't, that's, that's for people with money. Uh, I, I'm just looking for places to, to stay cool. At 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 elevation, yeah, I want to be closer to the sun. Absolutely, Idaho is further from the sun. Uh, yeah, this this is a study room in the library. I I had two hours, so now I only probably have an hour left. So this, I just just uh, wanted to go over. I guess you call them trip plans, <laughs> just bouncing around. So following these higher elevations, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand. Those are those are some really good elevations. I was in where was I think I was in yeah I was in Idaho last year and I was just I couldn't believe how hot it was getting. Every city I went, I could not find any relief. But I'm finding a little bit of relief in the uh, in, uh, Wyoming area, the mid-Wyoming areas. And it looks like I can find relief in, uh, throughout these Rocky Mountains. There's a lot of good libraries, a lot of good library areas to stop. If they got a library, they, they have uh, a pretty functional city. And um, when you get closer to back to Denver, these library hours get crazy, like really long. Again, it's there. They go from like these far out. This far out library right here, Saratoga. Well, it's gonna have. Oh, wait a sec. Oh yeah. Okay, they're kind of short. Wednesday only 11 to 3. Kind of short, closed on Saturday and probably Sunday. Yep, closed all weekend. <laughs> so you got some really short hours in the, on these outskirts. Estes Park, I've heard of that. I think I got that marked. That's, that's probably a marked one. Estes Park, Colorado. Uh, I don't no, I don't have anything marked there. There's, a, there's probably a library. Why didn't I? Why didn't I? Yeah, there's a library. Why didn't I mark it? Maybe because I'm not too close to it. Maybe because it's not something that was. Why can't I? I don't want to make it a starred place. Okay, let me. Nope, that doesn't work. Estes Park, Colorado Library. Just want to give it a favorite. And then, uh, how does that look? Oh, I see. Okay. I can sit over here a little bit. And then, uh, I, it's, uh, it's, it's probably pretty far away. Uh, Ed, yeah, what? How far away is it? Wow, that's what happened to all my dots. Fort Collins. But oh, oh, I never even marked Estes Park. What elevation is that? Estes, Estes Park. Okay, just a second here. Estes Park elevation. Estes Park, Colorado, elevation, 6035. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's definitely a good summer summer getaway. Yeah, Google Maps does not mark everything that you want. You, sometimes you actually you got to move to another city and then look again, and then something else, something will pop up that you, you want to know more about. It'll, it'll just... It can't it can't process everything at once. See, so yeah, Estes Park is around six thousand. That's that's pretty good. That's yeah. What? Col yeah, Colorado Springs is good. 
it's uh, six thousand. So yeah, Estes Park would be something that I would try to consider. You have to drive around the mountains though. Nah. Nah, you'd have to go from Granby to there. Now that's okay, Estes Park is a bit of a hassle to get to. It's a good relief from the heat uh, for these these western plain cities. A lot of these big cities build on the plains right outside the mountains. You got the plains of Colorado and the mountains. But yeah, getting around the mountains, it's it's a bit of a hassle just to visit a lot. I think I'd stick with just staying on the west side of these of the Rocky Mountain National Park. Just hit these these libraries all around the area. There's there's quite a few of them. They're pretty spread out. There's quite a few of them. And and then work my way south. See if I I don't want to go all the way south to Aspen. I don't think because I kind of want to slowly slowly make my way south and then be in line to just head straight east to back to Denver and then I guess from Denver just head straight south southeast try I try to avoid Pueblo I really don't like Pueblo like go to La Junta take a road take a back road to La Junta instead of go through Pueblo in a southerly direction for the winter time you know assuming the car can make it and all that but uh, definitely want to stay in these higher elevations for this uh, the summer heat just try to find as much relief as I can with this with elevation um, not sure how uh, like grocery stores and whatever are gonna be like uh, it's just all a chance you know sometimes you just you end up in a city that has like practically no grocery store you just it's a chance you take so that's uh, that's the risk and I guess that's all I was going to mention is just these uh, higher elevation cities look really attractive it's like I took my time on the coast because it was no problem the weather stayed pretty good pretty consistent it was it was pretty bad on the on the on the east side of the mountains. Redwood City got pretty bad in the in the summertime. You, but you hop over to Half Moon Bay and even into Pacifica. Those are nice nice areas for weather. I really enjoyed that cooler weather. It was like a it was like once again like a 10 degree difference. You just hop over the mountains. These mountains do something. It like traps the cool ocean air. Because um, Redwood City just got too hot. I was hanging around libraries. Yeah, I, there's there's one. Not not Woodside. Maybe yeah, like in Belmont. Probably yeah, the probably the Belmont Library is where I I hopped over the mountains into. Half Moon Bay. This is a great city. This is a really relaxed city. I didn't have any problems. I had problems in Pacifica with cops. I, I had a, I had a cops kick me out of the. I was hanging out of the library in the in the evening time and they kicked me out. But that's not a problem at Half Moon Bay. You can you can hang out all all day and night around the library. Walk to the beach. Enjoy that cool weather. Yeah, on the east on the east side of these this green nice green patch, which I stopped for no I didn't stop anywhere in this green area. I don't know where you could stop. Um you you just drive on through from one city to the next. But this this is all nice green area, it'd be cool to hang out to, to check out, but I never did. I don't know where the parking spots are. I did I did bicycle from from the Pacifica to the South San Francisco Library over those mountains. Uh, that was interesting. San Francisco is cool right now. If 
but you don't you don't need the coast if you got a higher elevation. These yeah, these guys are like these guys are ocean level, so no problems there. On the coast, staying staying pretty cool. Depends on which side of the mountains you are. There's there's uh, some waves of mountains, but in Colorado it's it's a little bit a little bit of a different journey. Where is it? Oh, you just you. Uh, I don't I don't want to make any mistakes of uh, getting going into the plains. Casper is looking curious, but the elevation for that is just too low. Oh yeah, that's a Walmart. I thought I marked the Casper Library. I I didn't even see. I didn't even care to consider Casper because of that high higher temperature for the. This, it'd be great for the the fall time. It'd stay a little bit warmer at least. 82. Uh, yeah, and it's what is it like in the 70s on this higher elevation city. Casper is no, I want Casper Library. Didn't mark it. I'll mark it right now. Oh, there's okay. There's oh no, not the college. Rarely do I hit a college library. I just uh, no. I, okay, I gotta expand the screen. And then restarts. Casper Library, Wyoming. And it's Natrona County, open until 6? Okay. And then Casper, yeah, it's the elevation is Casper Elevation, Wyoming. Uh, 51, yes, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a little warmer because of that lower elevation, 5118, but it's even warmer in Idaho with those two that 2000 5118 and label just yeah that's that's the that's the benefit of having a good elevation for the summer for the winter I guess I would want to focus I would not consider I would consider the plains only for the, the getting into the fall and the winter, hopping up into the mountains for the summer, staying in the, staying in the higher elevations for the summer, and then going back down into the lower elevations. That'd be no problem at the end of August, roughly the beginning of of uh, September. Just head head into the plains. Yeah, like Amarillo, that's like a popular area slowly try to make a, a southeast uh, direction in that way further south if necessary because I'm sure it snows in Amarillo head so I don't have anything marked for that for these areas I'm not even considering them right now it's all about just trying to stay cool in the mountains and and uh, uh, use use the, the the weather of the higher elevations as an advantage sitting in my car I mean I could roll down all my windows but when it's 80 degrees out even with the windows down I'm still sweating so I want to avoid sweating and and just get some relief find some different relief air conditioning no no I don't have air conditioning it's uh, well I do have air conditioning but it seems to it seems to like cause more um, stress on my motor than than should then I don't want to allow any extra stress that beyond driving on my car so I got I got pet net over the windows in fact the windows are down right now it's but I got pet net over them so it's a, it's hard to tell if the windows are down or not um yeah and then uh, just work with the wind whenever I can get wind so that's that's it that's just uh, staying in the mountains. This is all gonna from from for the next couple of months. I'm just gonna focus on on uh, traveling around the mountainous regions, up and down, I guess, around windy mountains, and um, yeah, hope hope the roads are all in stable condition, and hope no bears try to get inside. I'm thinking that you know there's bear spray that's sold for thirty dollars, but 
It said there's a lot of capsicum used in it. Well, why don't I just buy some, uh, yeah, the, um, wait, take an afternoon and clean your car. No, I'm not going to clean my car. That's, it's just going to get dirty again. The sun bakes it all in, so it stays, uh, it's a stable dirt. It can't, it's not like being on the coast. Um, the, the, uh, the bear situation is, the, I guess, the scariest. I'm seeing more bear, bear deterrent product, products. And I, I would consider getting a whistle and a lot of wasp spray, wasp spad too. I... I had a bad wasp problem, somewhat bad wasp problems in in uh, in the east part of Washington, um, and also into Idaho as well. And I have noticed wasps in the Colorado, Wyoming area. Uh, I, I don't really see it as a problem. Mosquitoes haven't really been a problem anyway. But I think I'm just going to get some. I'm going to get some cayenne pepper. And I'm just, just going to use this cayenne pepper, maybe get a bigger container, and just kind of and, and open, up the, open up the container and hurl it at the bear if it tries to get me. Or maybe I'll douse myself in cayenne pepper. If, it, if I have a bear attack and it looks really serious, maybe I'll douse myself, and then when it starts chomping on me, it'll, it'll, its mouth will burn. Um, something like that. I, I don't know. It's... It's uh, getting that container. I can't. I'm not. I'm not too comfortable about keeping it in my hot car. So um, I don't think I want to do that. But uh, if cayenne is it, maybe some black pepper or something to use as as a bear deterrent. I, I don't plan on. I don't plan on uh, going out into the woods. Um, being more more than a more than a. I, I, uh, too far out from a city, I'm thinking. I'm not going to go in the woods too far away from a city. Yeah, the cops are, are, are a real a challenge. I haven't really looked into these these individuals. Like, like for example, if I were to... Laramie looks like it'd be okay. You could probably hang out at the Walmart there. I haven't checked for Walmarts. Um, I just, I kind of don't expect, Centennial has a 9,000 elevation or something. They got a library, but uh, this, this is a very sparse city. Could I spend, could I find things to do for a day in a city so sparse? I'm not sure. I mean, the historical museum looks attractive. Um, hanging out at the library, that's going to be short hours, depending on the day I can get there. Um, what are what are things to do in a small town like that? This city, this town was not going to have uh, a local police as small as it looks. It's going to have sheriffs, so they're they're going to have more of a a broad a broad uh, approach to the law. Let's see how that works. Um, yeah, I I don't know about haircuts. I I just I'm back to scissors because my my clippers were stolen in Albuquerque. So it's when you cut your hair, it's I measure my hair. I don't know if this can even show up. I measure my hair by uh, two knuckles. So I'm whoops I'm 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 close. I could I could shave off an extra knuckle I guess, but uh, I already cut my hair. And I do two knuckles. There's some parts I might have missed, like that part. I missed that part. So all around, it's you know, it's not perfect, but it's hair. It's not. It's not. Uh, I'm not shaving. So you shave, you want to make it look even. Like in the military, if you miss a patch in the military, that's noticeable. But cutting cutting long hair, that's not as noticeable. Yeah. So that's. That's it. Uh, sleep in a small space. Yeah, I, I don't sleep good. I mean, it, I, I, I feel rested, so, but I just, like, I slept, I had something like wedge, something was like on a, I had like a bump that was pushing on my liver, and my stomach started feeling sick. Uh, I woke up with a sick stomach, 
and also my liver felt like it was it lost uh, blood blood pressure. And I've noticed that when I when I was sick uh, a couple months ago, um, it was like m my liver was tight and I was feeling sick. It's like the the liver kind of uh, affects that. When you sleep on a bumpy bumpy space, and if it pushes on certain organs, you're going to have different effects. It's going to cut off blood circulation to certain areas. Um, let's see. It's individual cities. This blue one, I don't even, I think that's like a, a food bank I marked. Oh no, I marked the whole city. Uh, I, I don't know. I, do they have a, a library? I don't know why I marked the whole city. Yeah, there's there's no... Okay, so this is Fox Park. It's like something curious. There's no library, so... You know, they're, they're definitely not going to be friendly to outside people. If they're not... If they don't have a, li a, like a public library, they got... They have nothing. This is just... This is just an area for commuters, and they don't, they're not too... They may not be too friendly to outsiders. I'll tell you one city that was not friendly on my way up north was Colorado City, not Colorado Springs. This one, this this is a commuter city, and I could only spend a couple of nights there because I got like on the second night I slept around here in this parking lot, and I got a, a parking notice put on my car. While I was sleeping in the parking lot, some guy, and I recorded it, it's just, it's, it happened, it's like, <laughs> like a few seconds, but these, these people are just a commuter town, a commuter area, and, and it's, like, it's hard to find, I slept the first night in the library parking lot, that was kind of risky, uh, oh, um, the library is so new that they don't even have they don't even have it marked. There's a parking lot and then a building, and it's it's so new. It looked like a new building, so yeah, there's the building. You can see it, but it's just the map is I don't know what year. Uh, 2019. Um, I'm not sure when the library was built, but this okay. Uh, this originally the area was did not have a library. They're not. They're not friendly to. They're not friendly to um, lo like outsiders. So I got I got kicked out of that one pretty quick. Yeah, I, I don't know about a tent. Um, like I have a tent, but it takes like 15 minutes to set up, 15 minutes to take down. I could just move blankets in my car and and be fine. Relatives? No, I don't. I don't have any. I'm the black sheep of the family. Nobody takes me in, so I don't. I don't even bother to. I, I don't keep contact with any family members. I don't. There, there's. There's nothing. I just kind of just do take do my own thing. I, it's. It's. Uh, it's a. Uh, I agree to just leave each other be. Um. So yeah, I. Colorado City did not have a library for a long time. I'm a little surprised. I didn't look into that until just now. They didn't have a library for a long time. And then, and so it really was not friendly to, to, to people. Public libraries kind of open up the doors for outsiders to come in and relax and then learn about the city. That was before. That's a commuter, like a commuter town for Pueblo. Um, and then, yeah, Pueblo, it's, people disappear in Pueblo. You can hide bodies around there. And then you got that, that village on the, on the Lake Pueblo, on the water, on their reservoir. This is a village right here. And I recorded some of that. I walked around. These people are living in houseboats. Really, like, it's like, they got stores. This is like, there's stores here and they they uh they can take care of themselves just on the water on a reservoir. I've never seen a village on a reservoir like that. 
that's that's uh, that's different. On a sleep on a I, yeah I, I don't I don't really uh, know how to ride a motorcycle. I don't have a license for that. I suppose yeah um, I have to I have to stick with the car, the car with a bicycle on the back and I'm good. That's uh, I need a, I need that roof. I, you know you, I don't know how people do it with motorcycles. I mean it's, it can get rainy and then it can get windy and then blow your whatever roof you have the the tent or whatever around too much it's a car is pretty stable a small a nice small car i am a jealous of people who have bigger vehicles than me the rvs vans yeah I, I i got one that's i got a tent in my car that sleeps four people but i i haven't used it except to catch berries last year when i was i was yeah i was in in washington last year and i I collected all kinds of uh, these huckleberries in in the Washington area. Yeah, uh, that pretty far up north. I guess I was pretty far. Um, I no no that's Idaho. In Kennewick, I was catching all kinds of these like mulberries, huckleberries on a tent. I just laid the tent out, caught the berries, got like ten pounds. All you have to do is shake the branches, and you get a ton of them. But I'm not seeing those berries anywhere around Colorado. This right this time of year is is great for those berries in in Washington. This time of year is great for salal berries on the coast, around yeah, around, especially the best spot is Iwako with for salal berries. You go to Iwako, walk around the park area, anywhere in this green area, they got great salal berries. It's a good time of year to pick those. Um, yeah, and, and there's some areas that have, have really good, like, okay, that's the advantage of Idaho, I think, is in the northern parts. So I, I was picking a few more berries, like plums and stuff in the northern regions. I'm not seeing anything around here maybe I need to get out more but I haven't I haven't seen anything in in this uh, this Wyoming area so it's you there's what what kind of mountain berries yeah the, the I'm trying to make my videos a little bit better uh, by adding adding um, different angles especially with the uh, Especially with the uh, the drone, since I've been hanging out in this this city, which I think today is the last day I'll be in this city, uh, um, Cheyenne. Then I, t I think tomorrow I'm just gonna head out. I've lost I've lost motivation to to really fly this. I've checked out every every everywhere that I care to, and. Uh, now it's just kind of this. This thing is like dead weight in a way. I don't. I don't really use this uh, this drone too much around here anymore. It's like when I get to a city, I start. I, as soon as I get there, I'm excited. I want to check places out, and then I, I, I'll I'll be happy to to play around with this a little bit more. But when I start uh, getting familiar with the city and stuff, I just don't play around with the. Uh, with the other, with this thing as much, I guess. Yeah, Pacifica was was really nice. That's a cool area this time of year. Horse, mo, uh, mo, horse Half Moon Bay is, I think Half Moon Bay is a little bit better than Pacifica. I, that's like old, Half Moon Bay is one of my favorites. Yeah, Wyoming is pretty desolate. Um, so. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of cattle ranchers. You can go to uh, in the capital. They have they have a a free museum. See, the only museums I go into are the ones I don't have to pay for. I'm not willing to pay for any museums. So uh, I was able to go into the that one. I didn't. I don't. I, I'm trying to record things I have never seen before. So I have recorded some stuff in that in that uh, state museum. And a lot of the information, like the Johnson County Wars, 
which that's that's crazy. People like kill each other for for grazing rights, and um, it, it's just they that happened. Johnson County wars is is uh, you, you learn about in in that museum. Johnson County, Johnson County, I think is north of here too. I don't think I'll I'll be going into that. Johnson, okay, there's a Johnson County wars uh, movie. And you can look up uh, this that information. Does that show up well? Uh, they, they 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 did they killed they like hired people outside of the state to come in and and uh, and to take out the the small. It's like big ranchers against small ranchers, and the big ranchers could afford to hire out. I got somebody windows up. I don't know where I'm at. Okay. Yeah, Reno is definitely a, a curiosity, but it's it's uh, it's a long way from uh, the direction I'm heading to now. I'm 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 circling back west to go into the mountains. I'm no longer interested. I'm no longer really. Reno is five thousand feet. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong window. Okay. Okay, Reno is five that's crazy I I'm not that's I never uh, I never really gave that much thought I guess maybe because of the the the, um, the Sequoia National Park maybe has some influence there Reno Nevada elevation wow that's that's you know that's higher much higher than I expected I, I, or I really gave much I didn't ever really give it much uh, thought so that that would stay um, pretty good weather because being closer to the coast and in a higher elevation that's that's not too bad see I, I got I got kind of a, a bad attitude about uh, some some ranchers I've seen a lot of uh, farm fields that look beautiful cows on nice green grass it's beautiful you just see them enjoying themselves but there's some places where the cows live in just mud and their own filth and and I mean I, I just think you know there's if these people, if there's people killing each other over over the uh, the territorial rights for cattle ranching, these might be the same people who are also abusing their cows and trying to put too many in a small space, and it's it, it can kind of turn a person bitter about the whole industry. But there are some good people who who do a, a, a good job managing the the field size compared to the, the cow numbers. And, and uh, it's, it can put you in a better mood about their, their operation. The high desert, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's right. That's, it would be a, a desert in the highlands. I, I guess I don't, I probably may have been in, through a high desert or, or something. It seems like I haven't paid attention to elevations really. I don't, uh, I never really paid attention to the elevations until I got to Colorado. I didn't even pay attention when I was going through Idaho last year, and I should have. I, I should have realized that's why it was so hot. Um, but I mean, I survived. It's not like I, it's not like I was, uh, I, I never had a moment last year where I woke up with that, that feeling like, you sleep in, in a temperature so hot that it just you, it wakes you it wakes you up and you feel like you're about to die. You just need to get moving and cool down. There's I've had those moments in Wisconsin, <laughs> but I've I've improved my conditions. I have pet net up on the side windows of my car now, so I can improve the airflow. That helps a little bit. Um, uh, shade is and that ain't, oh. And, and that I, I uh, I'm not improving my shade situation. See, it, it, I guess I guess mainly just focusing on elevation right now. When I get out of this region, because I, I don't plan on staying here uh, beyond beyond this year. Next year I'll, I, in, I intend to continue further east, and then I'll have a I'll need to have a different strategy for traveling you know this is this is assuming I survive 
All right. If I, I survive the mountains of Colorado, the mountains of Colorado are my strategy right now. I'll just for the next couple of months I'll hang out in the in the higher elevations, and then head south again for the winter, and then come up kind of a southeast. I guess that would take me through Oklahoma and all the real Midwest states where I just there might be more opportunities for shade. I'm not sure because it does get darker and green, so it's, it's something to think about. Yeah, I, the there's there's a lot that I missed on the west side of of the the nation. I, I missed quite a bit. So I, I you can see the, look at my dots. You see, I, I made a big circle around those areas. Oh. I made a big circle around those areas. I, I pretty much circled around Nevada. All right, I never, this dot in the center, I never went to, Fly Geyser. So like somewhere I wanted to go. And the salt, the salt flats, the Highland salt flats. It's just, it's like, it doesn't really look like much anyway, but I'm sure it's pretty neat to look at when you're there. It's just, I skipped over a big circle. I really wanted to check out the the Sequoia National Forest and all that, where the gold was first gold was first discovered. But I just it it was getting it was I think the summer was kicking in. That was like two years ago, and I was okay. I was summer summer was coming. I was in like I was coming up through the. The, uh, the this farm the farm territory or whatever they call it the uh, I forget the name to rain yeah it's gonna rain in Alabama um, I'm not going no Pikes Peak that's that's uh I mean I I, I took some pictures of it uh, when I was starting starting in in Woodland Park. Uh, you could see you know, the library is is was designed to face Pikes Peak, so you get a great view of that. That's pretty neat. And then also, also in Colorado Springs, which I just left, that that Eastern Library uh, is designed to face Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak is very significant, and and that guy, uh, whatever is you U.S. stress or U.S. Eurestress Pike. He's got. He created his own journals, similar to Lewis and Clark. So the guy, the guy, the guy Pikes Peak, named after. He. You could read his journals, and that's something I, I wanted to look up. Uh, it's like Eustress or what the Pikes Peak. Okay, they're gonna. They'll say it's it's a it's a name you never see. Z oh, Zubalon, what? Yeah, and he he uh, he was hired out by um, Thomas Jefferson on an expedition similar to Lewis and Clark. He left like after them, and he discovered the more southern regions, and he kept journals similar to those guys that you could read. And I was thinking I'd like to check out the the Amazon Amazon and see what they have for like. On the Kindle, if you can download anything, I paid a dollar for the Lewis and Clark uh, journals, and I wouldn't expect his journals to be more than a dollar as well. But yeah, that's Zubalon. Who's who's named Zubalon? These you know, who who uses a name like that? Um, yeah, I, I, it'll be a, it'll probably be like two two years or so before if you know assuming that my car is fine and everything's fine and I don't get any tr if I don't get in, in in trouble with the law in any way because that that held me up for six months in in Boise between between the the Meridian arrest between the Meridian ticket and then and then the Horseshoe Bend ticket I was tied up in Boise Idaho for for over six months dealing with the law Dealing with the court, waiting on court cases. That was that was tough. Meridian is is really tough on on the outsiders, on the homeless. They'll give you a ticket, and then the courthouse, 
They use the Boise Courthouse, so all Meridian tickets send you to the courthouse in Boise. So any any homeless people get sent to Boise to to await their their tickets and stuff. Uh, and then then when that was over, I I go up to Horseshoe Bend and then get that arrest, which he took me back down to the jail in Boise. And then I had to find and then I had to walk all the way from Boise to Horseshoe Bend, which is 20 miles, but a cop picked me up after, I guess after Hidden Springs, probably before the golf course. I walked quite a, there's a library? I probably would have seen that. Nah, there's probably not, no? That, well, yeah, any, anyways, it was, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was tough to deal with. Yeah, there's there's a lot of little cities that I definitely, I mean, I want to see. It's just you can get tied up sometimes. You can't. It's 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 not always easy just to freely travel around and and enjoy the sights and stuff. Sometimes the law is gonna tie you up. A lot of these nice areas are gonna have so many rules because they've attracted many many people before you, and there's been issues. Like apparently, I was listening to some guy talk about his drone, drone running a drone in Yellowstone Park. He was like in the northwest quadrant, and he's getting a ticket for for a law created out out of the uh, out, out of some cases like a guy crashing his drone into a geyser. Is like it's not the the law. The law like suddenly becomes a this broad stretched out. Um, and, and uh, thing that they're that they enforce over over everything uh, when it should be more individualistic I, I would think maybe maybe consider the this individual case if you're not if you're not harming anything flying a drone into a, a geyser yeah that's that's definitely uh, worthy of a ticket but just flying a drone in in that area in general is is kind of risk is kind of and getting a ticket for that is kind of silly yeah I, I like I like the idea of truck routes truck routes look really attractive I maybe there's a map out there for truck routes um, they they seem to lead to good places uh, for for overnight sleeping uh, truck routes, but they're not clear. They're there's, they're very spotty. Every so often you'll see, oh, this is the direction for a certain truck route, and then and um, yeah, it's hard to to really know what to make of it exactly. Um, there's areas you just you just have to pay attention to where trucks park. I think they have the truckers have some kind of a network. They 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 know where good places are to park because, like in this city, I just I saw there's this gravel parking lot and you can just park. There's people who were parking there overnight, but it, it looks like some place that would have might kick me out. But nobody, people that I've been watching have not been kicked out. So it's you have to like pay attention or um, somehow get into this this network. These people who talk to each other about where the good spots are. Yeah, there's quite a few horses in, in the Wyoming area and, and uh, Colorado. There's like horse, there's like, there's like communities that are like, well, there's, there's like this, this weird community in, in, in Pueblo for, dedicated to like um, horse riding. I, I don't I don't quite understand it. It was like I went through this horse community on the way to the the Pueblo Reservoir somewhere is is like it might pop up. Sunny Heights? No. No, it's I don't I didn't quite understand it. It said like it had this sign that said you are entering a horse community. So I don't know what to think of that. Like, are there different rules for that? 
That was, that was kind of strange. I went, I don't know if, I went through this, this area, I, I believe. But I guess it's not something that they can mark on the map. It's not like an official community. It's, it's just some kind of unique horse community. Okay, yeah, renal. Oh yeah, you can be hung for hung in Nevada for killing a horse. You it's a federal it's a federal law for cutting down a fence. So that's that was uh, I think started in it sounds like it was started or at least I didn't learn about it until Colorado. If you cut down any of that barbed wire fence, that's a federal offense. So that's that's interesting because they were having a lot of issues with that. Fence was going up so fast and, and it's, it's, it's like you could cut it down and the next day they could set up they could set up uh, fence even more fence and just and keep it coming because it's, it's in the eight, late 1800s it's was, it was very very uh, easy they, they made a lot of it. I'm not sure if it's uh, like cheaper I don't know I don't know the economy around it at the time but it, it really popped up fast and changed the landscape and it really impacts us today uh, especially for traveling there's just so much so many restrictions it's so easy to create restrictions uh, it's so easy to create um, just limitations to, our, to traveling by setting up a fence but you see a lot of old fence around just just laying it's like it's it's not just about the fence it's also a matter of enforcement too they could put up fence and signs but if it looks if the fence looks old and the signs look old the enforcement might not be there and you may you may be able to have no you may not have any problem crossing over and checking things out especially when the if the fence if the fence posts look bent over you know what the heck you know you could probably step over and and check out the area you know, it's the state of the fence. If the fence looks fresh and new, the signs look sparkling and 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 clean, uh, then you could probably expect the enforcement to be uh, pretty 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 strict too. Yeah, that's that's a lot of driving to go all the way to Minnesota. I can't do that. I I only have so much money. I'm losing money every day on on YouTube. It's it's just. The views are down. Everything is down, so I, I have to constrict. I gotta, I gotta mark food banks. That's the next thing. I gotta check out where those food banks are. I'm sure there's gonna be some in these, in these remote, remote towns. They gotta go, give. There's, there's some interesting. There's some amazing towns that really give a lot of good support with food banks, for, for locals and and anybody that goes, shows up. Yeah, see, Minnesota, it's it's hot and it's it's it doesn't you can go that you can go that far north and and still not find much relief from this summer heat. The mountains of Colorado look a lot more attractive, and I'm not I'm not trying to cover long distances. That's something for like the the big the big YouTubers who are getting getting a lot of gas money getting getting more way more money beyond gas money they can buy buy all kinds of extra stuff and for their travels I, I took a big risk getting this this uh, this drone that's that's a lot of money and now I really and now that my, my views are down and everything's down I really have to conserve because I bought that and and uh, because of my my lower lowered earnings rate too so it's I gotta I don't wanna I can't be making those big jumps try to try to take it easy on the car so all right I guess I only just gonna talk about now I'm not I'm not asking I'm trying to find figure out uh, ways to uh, reach out because I think that it's a matter of um, advertising and and YouTube I can't expect YouTube to advertise I was listening to Nomadic Fanatic, 
And he said that, no, I don't want to return it either. I, I, I like it too much. I, I think I can live with it still. Nothing's, no, no, no I, I don't, I haven't come across any emergencies where I need the money that I spent on it. And it's too late anyway. It's over two weeks since I bought it. But I was listening to Nomadic Fanatic talk about how he advertises on his RV. That, uh, and he noticed that when he, when he got a, his new RV, that he was uh, getting uh, less, like he wasn't, he was uh, getting 20 or 30 fewer subscribers every day or something. So he was, he was like doing the, um, like the grassroots style of advertising and, and on with this vehicle. Uh, I think I need to do something like that with my car. I have some ideas. I like, like, uh, I don't know if this will show up, but I just, I, I played around with, sewing um well this this is called embroidery so i don't know if it i guess there's a timing issue I, I'm, I'm holding the hat up I, I sewed some embroidery on my my hat to advertise a little bit and i'll see how that uh reaches out to people i want to i want to do more embroidery like advertising um maybe uh, on my on my car i have that pet net so i think maybe i can and embroider some advertising for the Daily Roamer channel. I don't want to put my name. You have a drone, a two-year-old drone. Um, yeah, I, I uh, I've lost motivation. Just if I hang out in one area too long, I lose motivation. I there's nothing else I want to record. I, it's just a matter of getting somewhere different that you get that refreshed feeling and. You're curious about everything. You just want to take take pictures of all, all kinds of stuff. Like if I went back to Victor and, with the drone, I wouldn't be as enthused about uh, flying the drone around there as much as when I first went there. It's that first stepping off the boat type of feeling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Decals, stickers. I was thinking about stickers. Like what comment? I. Yeah, contributions. I'm not. I'm not looking for contributions so much. I'm, I, I think it's it's better to, instead of instead of asking people individually for money. Like a, it, it it seems to me to be like standing on a street corner begging for money. I, I don't want to do that. I wanna I wanna um be you know be um like uh like <clears throat> productive for the advertisers. Like if I could figure out how to increase subscriber rates and and stuff like that I'd, I'd rather I, I, I need I need to reach out I can't be like asking for people to give me anything I, I want to reach out with advertising to more people there's millions of people I pass yeah I pass by hundreds and hundreds of people every day it seems um, yeah yeah I um, I, I wanna I wanna advertise, and I'm, I'm thinking if I if I could advertise on my hat, advertise maybe with some clothes like stickers, like like a bumper sticker. Uh, I would have to wonder what other people do that too, um, like put a bumper sticker on your car for for I don't know like the daily roamer. But I need to I need to like set up like a good logo, something that looks nice. Like I have this on my hats. It's it's the D and R together, and then it, it could be it could be improved. But I, I was thinking maybe I could just try to focus on trying to promote daily roamer in, in some way, and, and then maybe um, getting uh, other products that uh, other people maybe could promote or something. I I don't know. It's I learned a lot about marketing and in, in, in uh, college, but I have not put it to good use. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just need to, to, to reach out to people better. I need to have a better attitude for one. It's psychological, and then I also need to use some business sense for advertising as well. And reaching out with advertising uh, on a grassroots, like I, I, I just. You know, there's there's dumb ways to do it. I could just run around and and uh, graffito, graffiti, 
uh, buildings and stuff saying subscribe to the Daily Roamer. But that's ridiculous. There's a tip box on Twitter. I, um, yeah, that's the thing. With T-shirts, I don't wear T-shirts except under underneath uh, my my button shirt. So I just I want I want things I want to create I, things that uh, are are inter that seem interesting to me at, at least. Um, I just uh, I, I like I like the idea of advertising on hats. Maybe maybe PetNet. I see people like I'm, I'm thinking like. I would like to try to market. Maybe, maybe I'm trying to make a video and market like pet nets because there's people who drive around with their dogs' heads hanging out car windows, and I'm like, if you could just design uh, your a pet net, which pet net is sold at at Walmart, so you could you could uh, design it for your car door, and then you could roll your window all the way down, and 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 your pets can enjoy uh, that. Yes. Um, uh, speed sell sell uh, like s products that you could you can make with a speedy stitcher. I don't know. Well, um, I, I was just I just started this video to uh, go over um like like plans for um uh, where to go on in the mountains and and actually you, you've given me some good feedback, uh, Eric Farmer as as you you be living in the mountains. I, um, it's uh, you you sound encouraging for for doing this, going onto the mountains like this, and it's it's a matter of finding out for myself what it's like. So that's what I made this video for, and I think I'm just gonna end it right here.